when it comes to it here in their first match in the uh, EZL Benelux Championship. And we'll have to see. So Nidalee being taken away from Donny, first of all. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's going to be an, an interesting one. And Tom can't b- b- band away this time. So I'm happy for that one. <laughs> yeah, bench the Kench. Uh, yeah. We can't, we, we can't do it this time. So that's uh, that's good. So we don't have to deal with the uh, annoyances that he uh, brings. But Rumble getting banned out, I guess that's to uh, stop Fjordar Fjordlift, uh Correction, um, Total from using yeah. it. Uh, um yeah. I've seen uh, Buipo play them this weekend as well. Had a pretty good uh, performance, surprisingly to me, because Rumble has kind of disappeared from competitive play a bit. Um, so uh, Total is, uh, I wouldn't say well-known, but he really likes to play Rumble. So uh, taking it away from him, just in case. And we have a Sivir as a first pick. Now that's pretty interesting to put such a high priority onto the Sivir. Yeah, uh, maybe mobility comp. They just want to get safer because it's going to be key in uh, their uh, in a high mobility comp. Because I don't know, safer safer offers a lot of field, uh, a lot of battlefield control. But I I'm I'm not entirely sure if you really like you said put that much uh, emphasis on on her. Yeah, because uh, they they also ban the way karma themselves. I I I mean I could expect if you would run. Sivir Karma in the bot lane, you have a lot of mobility, be able to speed up your whole team, uh, easy to engage and disengage. But they banned it away, so priority on a Sivir, which is not really even the highest contested champion. Oh boy, did I miss something in Twitch chat? Uh, yes, <laughs> Shannon, uh, Shannon Jin getting picked up here by the team of um, the one and... Uh, Mcon, wow! Right. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> in the meantime. I, I was a little bit surprised about this. I'm still a little bit surprised about the Sivir pick, so I got kind of distracted uh, by the uh, interesting um, setup from the blue team. Now they pick up the Elise and the Trundle. Uh, Trundle. Um, Trundle is an interesting champion for the top lane. Yeah, uh, assuming he's going top. I was just going to say I'm expecting. Uh... Well, not expecting. I'm, I'm kind of guessing it's going to be a, a support trundle. Uh, top lane trundle has also disappeared a little bit. He has been played bot lane pretty often, uh, but that usually happens when the opponent picks, uh, uh, sorry, picks the uh, picks the brom, and then you can uh, respond to that with the trundle. So that's that's kind of interesting. They have to listen that as well. Uh, one of the uh, priority picks in, in case, uh, well, in sorts of the junglers. Uh, so he will definitely do well on that one. Because it, it does allow them to make some early game picks here. Yeah, definitely. On the other side, it's uh, Rek'Sai and perhaps uh, Bart. No, it's going to be the Bram. So perhaps we're going to be seeing that bottom lane uh, trundle coming out like you um, like like you were predicting. We'll see. Um, Kreia Bea on Urgot. Um, okay, <laughs> now I'm going to ask, have you seen Urgot at Reality? Yes nope. or no? Okay. Nope. And I hope I will not see that one for the next five years. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 not do Urgot, okay? I mean, I mean, for me, if Azrael's here, like Urgot is like way down there. I, I yeah, no, no, I, I just, can no. imagine Urgot's. <laughs> the, the issue with Urgot is that either he's OP or he's ba- or he's well bottom tier. There, there's no in between because of his kit. Yeah. I think he's probably in line for a WeWork uh, anytime soon. Um, but, you know, Riot's pretty busy with uh, all the reworks coming in. But, yeah, Urgot not being locked in there, uh, not really surprising. So we have the Gnar for the top lane then, uh, for Total, and the Oriana coming out here. So a bit of a wombo. <laughs> but if it's going to work, it like I, th- I feel like the Oriana's a bit of a... Well, she's hit and miss. If you hit a five-man, uh, 3k elo, shockwave, you're going to win the fights. If you're going to whiff it a bit and maybe only hit one, you're most likely going to be screwed. So, I, well, you need to be really proficient with her to uh, to be able to carry the game. Yeah, definitely. Else, uh, like you said, it will be a shock whiff and um, will be quite useless in that aspect. So, Darkness Lol currently hovering over Victor. 
Um, I'm, I'm, ki- I'm kind of curious. Yeah, looks like they're going to be going for Cassiopeia once again. So Cassiopeia, cool. um, still very, very high pick, even after those uh, yeah. slight nerfs that she got. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you have the amount of knowledge and practice and experience onto a champion, a couple of nerfs aren't really going to change that too much. You're still going to have the same effectiveness because the kit stays the same. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, adjusting to the uh, changes that happen. So it's a it's the range reduction and the heal reduction, but that doesn't mean you can still uh, do... Uh, well, you won't do less damage at least. So that's the upside. So the damage remains the same. You still bring the same amount of utility to your to your uh, uh, to your composition. So I suppose it's it's not really uh, all too bad those nerfs. Yeah. Well, we'll be finding out uh, relatively soon what what the uh, outcome will be of Oriana versus uh, Cassiopeia. That and yeah. the only way to find out is actually to see them in combat, and that will be happening in about three minutes. So let's take a quick look at the different matchups that we are going to be uh, seeing. We're going to be seeing Shen versus Noir, assuming no lane, cha- no lane swaps. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be pretty boring, I guess. Uh, it's just two tanks, almost well, likely tanks. I'm not going to... Well, I, I kind of expect Toto to go uh, pretty tanky as well, seeing as their composition is it. Uh, but they're going to be smacking each other while the early game is going to be a bit of an uh, advantage towards Tolo on the NAR uh, because he has a range. However, as I stated during game one, I think, um, it might set you up for uh, missing a couple of CS because you're so focused on trying to push the opponent out of the lane. Yeah. Uh, so as long as he stays aware of that, top lane is not going to be that interesting. But then again, Move, uh, Moving on to the jungle. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we have Elise and Rek'Sai, uh, both pretty efficient at ganking uh, as well as clearing caps. Um, it's just a matter of who gets into the right position first. Um, honestly, I do feel that Elise is the better of the two right now. Um, it, it just it seems like uh, people have a better performance on the Elise than when uh, I see uh, them playing on Rek'Sai. Uh, but we'll have to see how it turns out. And uh, For me... The next one is the most interesting. The most interesting one is Oriana versus Cassiopeia. So, I I've seen people picking up Oriana once again this past weekend, and it was interesting. It was like I don't know. It's, it was like it's a, it's a it's a fallback for some people, um, but it hasn't worked out too well. Um, so I hope that Cots can uh, can show me wrong and and really comes out and shines here onto that champion. Okay. So now final lane, we're looking at the AD carries and the supports. Yeah, uh, just Sivir and Trundle uh, versus the Brom and uh, and Jin. I kind of expect it to be uh, relatively going back and forth uh, with trying to trade some damage. But overall, should be enough uh, protection coming out of these supports uh, and a little bit of Kite's uh, ability of Silver Mouse uh, that there shouldn't be any kills 2v2. Uh, but however, if the jungler comes uh, in between the two, uh, there's enough crowd control um, uh, of both sides actually to set up an easy gank. So. For me, the lanes to watch here is mostly mid lane to see if either of them can take a quick lead. Because if they get the lead and snowball a bit, uh, it should get out of control pretty quickly. Um, and then the bottom lane is going to, well, it should be a focus point for the junglers. Um, but we'll have to see how it works out. So. Yeah, and we're about to load into the game. So that means that there's not much uh, time remaining. Uh, before we actually get down to business, but that gives me a little bit of time to once again remind you of the fact that you can already get your tickets for the finals at the Amsterdam Arena. They are on the site. Just go to the site and find the early bear tickets. They are only 10 euros, so um, I would say just go and buy them. They're definitely worth your money. In the, mean, uh, in the meantime, we're like I said, we're loading into the game. And uh, yeah, Kronos, final game of the evening. Uh, how do you yeah. feel? I feel pretty good. I mean, it's been a pretty fun evening so far. Um, some interesting stuff we've seen. Uh, but overall, 
uh, pretty good competition going. Uh, you know, the last one was uh, maybe a bit different from the rest, but this one's going to be pretty close as well, I think. So uh, I, I, I'm hoping it's going to be a pretty nice season once again. Yeah, that's uh, th definitely what we were all hoping for, because last season, it was really close. Like, in the last yeah. week, I believe we had four different out uh, possible outcomes, with um, a lot of teams being able to make it in, or not make it in, or get kicked out, even. Like, yeah. even the Lach and the Gerdas, it was possible that they could have gotten kicked out at the last possible moment if they had lost their match. Because they, um, I believe it was, I do need to look that up, because I am not entirely <laughs> sure, but um, I actually see that. Uh, it's against look Enigma, it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was against Freelo, babe. Uh, let me see. Lach and the Gerdes <laughs> was playing against Sensei. So they yeah. know... Was it Lach and the Gerdes? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it was before all the all the strange things happened. But that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun uh, in that uh, last season. And this season is just going to be as good as it was, um, as the last season was, or even better, as we have loaded into the game. That means we're going to get ourselves ready to head into Summoner's Rift for the final game of the evening. It is the team of Easy Visualize against MCON Esports. Yeah, we are going uh, for, by the looks of it, pretty standard positioning this time. We've seen uh, two games of invades going on, uh, but they are setting up to basically close off every entrance towards the jungle and just keep an eye out and uh, set up for, uh, well, for just basic laning, pretty much. So the, the question really is, um, what are the bot lane going to do? Uh, usually what we see is either both teams go for a camp or the other team wants to deny a camp uh, and go for the invade. So I wonder if Nightmares perhaps tries to pop in a ward, get some more vision down, um, and maybe stopped him from uh, from getting those Krugs. Yeah, well, for now, though, both teams very slow start, very passive, and they just want to uh, get their early game going. Like, that's the thing. We have uh, Forklift assisting Donny. We have uh, Toddle uh, assisting Moss Swarm, and the game has been passed, so I'm not entirely sure what is going wrong. Uh, looks like uh, Silver Mouse is just reconnecting. Huh. And uh, right. that means that uh, we'll have to wait for a few more <laughs> moments as um, Brennage says, yeah, if you're reconnecting, I'm going to be walking the dog. I'm pretty sure you don't have time for that, Brennage. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, you kind of need to reconsider that choice. But yeah, so early start to the game is basically very passive. Everyone starts their standard uh, positions. And, well, I, I guess that uh, Jin and uh, Brahm are going to be just taking their own jungle instead of taking the, uh, trying to deny the Krugs. Because, well, last game they did get a lot of damage in, but the additional uh, experience from one of those Krugs did manage to, I believe, uh, give Caitlyn that uh, slight advantage that she needed. Yeah, I mean, we saw the in uh, invade with the uh, Ezreal... Trying to think of Ezreal Braum, I think it was. Uh, no, the Ezreal, Ezreal Tom Kench. Uh, they did so much damage at the first uh, first level, um, which kind of made me okay. worry that it would get out of control as we are going to get back into the game. And it seems the dog is ready as well, <laughs> as <laughs> stated by Kraybeya. Um, okay, Jim Brennan just put it on the balcony, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look out below! <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, it's just a whole new whole, whole new meaning to uh I okay. In any case it's um yeah, a slow start, as usual. And um very very passive, none of the teams deciding to uh try and fight back against one another. So yeah, yeah. so uh we just uh, well I got a sneak peek at the mid lane and the thing is when you're playing against Oriana it's all about uh Rotating around the ball position as Sebs and Koth really go aggressive against each other, uh, trading equally in the end. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a lot about positioning. You want to put the ball near uh, the minion wave so that um, Sebs, in this case, has to walk forward uh, into range of an easy uh, command attack or even command dissonance once he gets level two. So it is all about 
uh, getting the right position down and uh, trying to trade uh, in those good opportunities. Yeah, that's, what, that's that's basically what we're seeing right now. But if we're looking at the middle lane, um, both both um, mid lanes have already popped one cookie, so that means that uh, you can definitely see the harassment coming out. Uh, Seps actually <sighs> level three already. Look at the damage being dealt. Oh here. Cards, cards, cards. A lot of trouble. Can he can't survive? The flash, oh, no, no, no flash. He wastes his flash and he goes down. First blood goes over to Seps. Um, yeah, Mcom just takes the lead here with 700 gold already, courtesy of that kill, and that's going to allow Seps to get a very early tier. Yeah, and even Mosswarm is in trouble. Donnie going for the invade with the backup of Sebs, but he gets out safely. But he is going to lose his red buff, so yeah, he's visualized not off to a good start here. I'm also a little bit surprised that Donnie was able to get the red buff before um, Elise was able to, because usually you do see that um, it's, it's about an equal jungle, but it looks like uh, Donnie has decided to just ignore all his small yeah. camps <laughs> and just going straight for uh, the enemy red. Yeah, so he really was planning to go for some early aggressiveness uh, by going for the shortcuts in the jungle routes. So oh, you see I, some back and forth training here in the bot lane. Yeah, but look at the middle lane. I really like what Donnie just did. The, the, the warp disappeared. I'm pretty sure they had the timing down, and now he's just waiting there. He's like a shark. He's literally like, like a shark at the moment. <laughs> he's yeah, looking. he's getting into position. He no smells the blood. Flash. God, without a flash. Yeah, here we go. Donnie coming in. There's the knock up immediately. More stun slows everything. On to Cod. One more hit and another kill. <laughs> Two and zero already in that middle lane. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not even... What can we say about this? This is going to be a hard mid lane. Yeah. I've seen uh, Carnamel doing something similar this past weekend on the Cassiopeia. He got a lead and... After he got the first couple of kills, it's just insane uh, the amount of damage he can put out. Um, plus, yeah, with the early tier of the Goddess, it's some easy early stacking here for Sebs. And uh, let's see how much he has in his pocket. He is up to 700 gold already after that purchase. So that's pretty ridiculous. He is going to get his Abyssal Scepter most likely pretty soon. At least that's what I expect him to get. Uh, and Kot really needs to be careful. Yeah, definitely, and that's why he's getting a little bit of help here from Mosworm, but to be honest, I don't think Mosworm actually has the damage together with Kot uh, to actually take down Sebs, especially because he also has his cleanse available, he has his flash available, he's yeah. moving towards the bottom lane, they should know that he's around. Brain is a nightmare, need to be very careful, Kreabea going aggressive, here's the cocoon, lands on the nightmare, nightmare, just staying alive as long as he can, and Actually, long enough for him to be able to uh, break out of the cocoon and fall back. Now, the top lane, another fight. Donnie straight onto Toddle. Toddle uh, will be able to back away, so no problems right there. Yeah, he's going aggressively back towards <laughs> towards Donnie on Fircliffs. Uh, but he should be quite all right. But Donnie may be looking for a return gank. I mean, he, know, he, he now knows that his mid lane should be fine, so he needs to find advantages all over the uh, the rest of the map. So he is going to go for the invade. Uh, I think they spot his um, Mosworm invading uh, in their own jungle. So he goes for the counter invade uh, just to stay equal. And maybe oh. taking a look at mid lane once again. Oh, well, they boy. can do it Shen. here. They go. The channels are coming in. Caught in a lot of trouble. Look at the damage being uh, dropped here onto Cots. And yeah, he got, uh, he got caught, literally. <laughs> Nice work, uh, and yeah, they're like, okay, hey, God, <laughs> did you think you were going to come back to the game? I think not. They're rotating to the bottom lane to assist their bottom lane, which is uh, which is in a lot of trouble. And because yeah. they did so, they were able to push them away and take the dragon as well. It's also the, the fire drake, the infernal dragon. It's kind of, uh, kind of a, a good dragon to have. I believe it's the best one you can get, right? Pretty much. Um, it kind of depends on the team composition you want to run, uh, because the Mountain Drake, of course, helps with pushing a lot easier. So ha if you go for that kind of setup, that one is better. Um, plus, of course, the downside is it is a percentage bonus uh, to your attack damage and ability power. So in this early stage of the game, it'll only give you like, what, six or eight extra attack damage or ability power. So it's not going to be that important. Uh, but it's more for the mid-game towards the end-game, uh, where it really goes into effects. 
But it is my favorite one, because who doesn't like some more damage? Yeah, definitely. Like, if you're team fighting, that's, I guess, the best one to have. Um, looking at the way this game is playing out right now, like, there's a 1,500 gold advantage, but it's mostly in the mid lane right now. Um, which is actually where you want it, because that's one of your uh, your carries, but yeah, they now need to transition that mid lane advantage into... Oh, well, I suppose well. we're in a lot of trouble. There's the cocoon onto Seps. Seps um, could have cleansed that and followed it up with his ulti, perhaps. Huh. Maybe, maybe you want to save it? Yeah, I guess so. But I think if he would have punished Mosswarm as well, there isn't a whole lot that Easy Visualize can do to get back into this game. I mean, if your mid laner is down and your jungler is down as well and not able to uh, get him back into the game, uh, it's going to be difficult. But I think Sebs could have risked uh, using his uh, using his cleanse there uh, and maybe go a bit more ham onto that one. But it's just a matter of opinion, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 depends. it depends if he wants to play it safe or if he wants to be a little bit more aggressive in this case. That's basically what yeah. it boils down to. Like, if he wants to be uh, more aggressive, he probably would have done it. But on the so other hand, Mosswarm. do you really want to give them a chance to come back here? Now, most of them are in Yeah, goodbye, most of them. That's definitely Kraya Bay actually coming out here. Silver, Silver Mouse, there's Teleport for Fjodor. There's gold coming in here. Brett is trying desperately to straight stay alive in this one. And he manages to do so. And as a result, they get Kraya Bay and a total trying to escape this one. And oh, no, now Silver. there's also Silver. Silver, will he actually go down? Total down to. Oh my oh, god. Oh boy. Hit. That's all it takes. Oh, oh my word! And now from the side here, Seps is here as well. The poison takes him down. That was a four for zero, Gerard. That was just ridiculous. Yeah, that got out of control quickly. Mosworm got baited insanely there, thinking he could have a pick onto nightmares, but Donnie was already in position inside that dragon pit, and being that much ahead right now. Um, made it really easy for them to clean that one up, even with the uh, earlier teleport from Total, if I recall correctly. Uh, there was just wasn't much they could do about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, MCON this season, after previous season, well, being at the bottom of the of the, uh, the scoreboard, it looks like what they what they have done in that little uh, amount of time that they had since the, the, the finals, actually paid off. Looks like they can. Uh, they did a fine job here, and um, they're putting up a good fight against EC Visualize. Yeah. But, uh, it could also be the changes on EC Visualize that they don't work out yet. I don't know. There are many options, because we have new players, we can't really compare everything, but a nice uh, cocoon there onto Donny. Most Swarm will be able to escape courtesy, of course, of that little speed boost there in the river. Yeah, most Swarm still in a bit of trouble, still being chased, but I don't think that Donny and Sebs can really catch on to him. Um, but yeah, for now, by the looks of it, it seems like MCON has a bit better teamwork. They go for rotations, they set up ganks for the, uh, for the separate lanes. I mean, once again, they're looking at top lane this time. Um, so they're just working a bit better as a group. And it just started off with Kots, uh just getting killed in, in that mid lane. I think it was a 1v1 first, uh, then blew his flash, which kind of got wasted because he was dead either way and then just Donnie came in for the finisher just going for those return ganks making sure he does not get back into this game yeah and the thing is that's yeah that flash might have just uh, given away the uh, could have been that the flash is actually the thing that gave away the uh, the mid lane because at that point he had no more escape abilities available now forklift in the bottom lane gets the taunt on the silver mouse silver mouse taking a few tower shots and now Kraya Bea trying to take down Forklift. Actually does a fine job of do with that because he actually takes down Kraya Bay, uh, Correction Forklift to, well, what, 200 hit points? Yeah. It's not that much. And it should allow them to at the very least take the tower down to half hit points. Yeah. There is no first blood tower available anymore because oh, the is how Donnie, it was taken down. Oh, Donnie, blocks the bounce. Now they're chipping every dropping everything onto Toddle and yeah. Um, what can we say? Just CC <laughs> and uh, die. Yeah. Bottom lane, yeah. Seps and Forklift oh, coming no. in here. Here's the slow coming out from Kraya Bea. Can he do it? The exhausted Seps will stop a lot of the damage, but there's the taunt straight towards Silver Mouse. Silver Mouse, yeah. Silver Mouse is dead. That, that's no doubt about it. There's another fight 
almost breaking out, I guess. Because Bo Swarm <laughs> has to be very careful that he doesn't run into this uh, three-man team. Yeah, Silver Mouse and Krebe are just trying to get something back for the team, trying to pick up that turret, but getting flanked, having to uh, run into the wrong direction of the map. Uh, not really much you can do afterwards, so it is 0 to 9, unfortunately, uh, for Easy Visualize, and they are 7,000 gold behind. Uh, so that is a quite significant lead. Uh, not as much, I think, as we saw last game, uh, but still, it is getting quite out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Um, 6,000 gold at the 13 minute mark is basically what we saw last game as well. And that's yeah. almost insurmountable advantage or, and uh, disadvantage. Nevertheless, you know, Mcon going for the Cloud Dragon, smart move. Just deny every single thing that your opponents have and then just use it against them. Like, even though the Cloud Dragon is one of the most valuable dragons, it's still a dragon. Yeah, um, if you do it's... get, yeah, if you do get towards the Elder Dragon phase, uh, it, it does of course help with the amount of damage that does. And Carl trying to get out to safety had to flash away from the curtain call coming out of Brunash, but uh, at least he saved his own life. And but yeah, so they are going to go for that dragon, and it is kind of up to each visualize to set up the perfect play. They need to get the full Wombo combo down, uh, have Toto in Mega Nar form, uh, going for the engage, throwing everybody into the wall and following it up with a Shockwave. Um, but that's pretty much just what they need. They need oh, the perfect Silver play. Oh, Silvermouse taking so much damage. Look at this from Seps here. The poison will take down oh, no. and take him down. And AAB and I'm trying to turn it around to the Seps, but just look at the sheer amount of damage. Oh, here comes the reinforcements. And it's a double kill for Seps. Yeah, Seb saying, nope, you're not going to win this 2v1. I'll take you guys down. Getting a bit of help towards the end, but honestly, I think he had them uh, on his own. Yeah, definitely. He probably would have had him because he still had his cleanse available, so he could have got yeah. a little bit of speed to uh, back <laughs> away. But uh, yeah, they do get themselves another turret. They're now up to 8,000 gold over their opponents, and they're looking to go in. Donnie now straight into caught. There's the flash caught, going to get knocked up once, twice. And uh, we'll get taken out. Teleport actually came in here, but uh, was cancelled. So um, Tottle couldn't quite uh, get there. So yeah. that, mean, man, uh, that meant basically, well, he's just going to be defending that top lane for now. It's kind of the thing that happened after the teleport changes. Uh, the channel has been increased, well, quite a while back already. It has been increased. Uh, it's up to four and a half seconds. And having to respond to a fight and it having to take four and a half seconds is really way too long for your team to delay. So, in my honest opinion, the only way you want to use the teleport is perhaps to uh, stop a Baron, as we've seen last game happen once or twice, or maybe the game before that, actually. Um, and otherwise, uh, when setting up a gank. But having to use it to defend is... Well, it always seems so awkward because you just get in way too late and either have to cancel or you maybe even die straight after. Yeah, so it's pretty much a lose-lose situation. It's more of an active summoner rather than a reactive summoner than it was a few patches ago. So, for now, Red Team picks up the Rift Herald. Oh, no. Bottom lane steps into... Uh, but... It doesn't matter, step still goes down. Yeah. But that's okay, the kill went to Cot, which means that his um, bounty <laughs> reset. <laughs> that is true, yeah. So... It was tactical. It was totally <laughs> tactical by Seps. Tactical uh, death. I'm surprised they didn't even call it out yet. Like, all plants. I just want to get more gold next time I kill you. But <laughs> nevertheless, Moss Swarm unfortunately missing that cocoon. Um, but it worked out in the end. They had more than enough damage uh, to follow it up and, uh, and finish off that kill. So nicely done by them. They'll at least put some onto the board. But it is 1 to 12. And uh, there's still 7k behind. So at least that, that didn't increase too much. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, curious to see how this will play out here, especially with Kaya Bea um, being tanky, but not really tanky enough to actually play a major role in the team fights. Uh, Nar having finished the frozen mallets, but yeah, that's basically everything there's to it. And then we're looking at the middle lane, which is just a 
ridiculous. Moran and Omicron and the Archangel Staff uh, both completed at the uh, 17 minute <laughs> mark. That's just ridiculous yeah. now. Most of them are in a lot of trouble. Of course, the UC Rappel will be taking a lot of damage immediately. Everyone's just jumping on top of most of them. I think that was a little bit of overkill there by Brash. Perhaps, but, you know, kill secured, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, he definitely didn't need to use it. Um, but I think it's going to be fine. They're going to push down onto the top lane turret. They are going to try and defend it. Total has his teleport available, but no wards really Donnie behind there on it. The right. Donnie on the right, looking for the engage here, but here's the teleport coming in. Yeah. So Total wants that fight, but Donnie's there to the right. Look at the damage being dealt here to Kraya Bia. It's just, just ridiculous, down to half hit points. And immediately, oh, a beautiful Gnar coming out, Forklift and Nightmare, but they're turning it around, but immediately a Tom Total taking so much damage, and Forklift forced to jump out of there. But they do get yet another kill onto Toddle. And uh, Seps in the bottom lane is also taking out the tower, so they lose the tower, they lose Toddle. It was definitely not worth that fight in the top lane. But yeah, what else can they do? They, yeah, they, they kind of need to make moves, they need to do something because the game is already getting out of control and now they try and get back into it uh, maybe set up for a good fight as you see another dive onto the turret here yeah they're going to be able to take that silver mouse and now they're straight onto Kraya Bay and Kraya Bay of course to jump over the wall so uh, once again this this is just ridiculous uh, Kronos how how all of this just just goes down and how powerful the team of MCON is yeah I mean it's, it's not it's not even that to visualize are pay, playing bad or anything. It's just that Amcon is uh, strategically uh, playing better. They're just going in with the rotation, using Shen effectively uh, to get those ganks to work out and just picking up the kills left and right and following it up with an objective. And that's just what you want to do here. Yeah, exactly. So that's incredible, I, I have to say. Yeah. It's it's like you said. It's not that Easy Visualize is playing bad. It's that Mcon is playing way better. But the, they, they are doing yeah. a fantastic job with also with all their mechanics. Uh, look at the CS differences in the middle and the bottom lane. The, the only place where it isn't the case is in the top lane. But that's also because Shen has been all over the map all the time. Like every, every single time, yeah. uh, Donny wants to go in. Oh, Shen, click, uh, stand united. Uh, Seb's dies. Oh, Stand United. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean... Yeah, he has been doing exceptionally well. So, uh, it's pretty interesting. Oh, Donnie wanted to go aggressive here into five people. Does he really want to take this? Yeah, he is, because there's also a teleport coming out here from Forklift. And they're looking to push in, and then they're looking to back away towards the Infernal Drake, I guess. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Get the Infernal Drake now, then you have two more dragons that will spawn if you do it fast enough. Plus, so it is their second Infernal Ray. So, 16% bonus to their attack damage and ability power. So, this one is even more important than the first one. Mm -hmm. So, now, I mean, for example, if we we'll take a look at Sebs, who is uh, pretty much the one with the most damage item items, he has 444 ability power. So, about, well, 80 ish. Uh, well, not, not not yet, but at least 70 of that is coming from the Dragon buff. So that's pretty insane. It is it is a lot. It, it is a lot of uh, little damage that the Dragon buff adds. But then again, now Seb's in love from here's Shockwave. Seb's will try to survive. The Exhaust is still on him. He gets the shield from Archangel Staff. Uh, but now it's going to be Nightmare Lol who has to back away. Still alive though. Here's the Nar pushing Forklift right into the wall. But Total is just not tanky enough and will go down here. Oh, Curtain Call! gets a kill. And maybe another one? No, not going to happen. Although Donny looking for more, trying to take down Cod. Can he actually do it? He cannot. But that was a Baron and two kills. Yeah, Mcon looking to finish the game in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, Mcon not going too crazy with the chase there, uh, calling Donny to back off and go for the objectives. Because yeah, they do have Baron buff. They have, uh, they, well, they outnumber Easy Visualize. So they should easily be able to pick up that first inhibitor. And from here on out, it's going to be a pretty steep uphill battle for you to visualize. I wouldn't even call it an uphill battle. It's... <laughs> well, they it's do the manage to take Everest. them... Like, yeah, definitely. But they do manage to get a kill, but they lose Kraya Bea once again, and they lose their inhibitor. And what do you expect? They're 17,000 gold behind. That's 
just way too much, and there's not much that they could ever hope to do against it at the moment. Uh, even look at Donny, just immediately heading towards the bottom lane to assist with the push. He's trying to, uh, well, takes the crux, or no, he <laughs> never mind. He's not yeah, doing what yeah. I expect. I expected him to actually uh, empower <laughs> the minions so that tower would go down, but he decides not to. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. Just taking away something extra from uh, the team of individuals. Like, oh, all right, you guys are already down and out. Let's take away some of your jungle camps so you won't really have that much opportunity to get back again. Um, but it's really just a matter of getting items and uh, going for the perhaps 4 1 split push or 3 2 split push, uh, but at least making sure that uh, there's a lot of pressure onto the base of ECV. Yeah, that's that's just going to happen. Like the top lane is already seeing super minions pushing in, and um, well, while Forklift gets a little bit slowed here by Kraya Bea, it's just a slow. It doesn't do anything. Um, the kind of minion already firing on the turret, so they need to do something about that as well. And this is just a ticking time bomb right here. Baron buff still available for another one minute and a half or something like that. And you can just see the defenses. Of East Wish Life are crumbling second by second, uh, minute by minute, and there's nothing they can do. What is this Super Minion suddenly doing here? Super Minion got distracted, runs to the middle lane. Yeah, good job, Super <laughs> Minion. But that's not where they wanted the Super Minion, but it doesn't really matter because now also in the bottom lane, they have Baron empowered minions. Tower just getting taken down. One hit, two hit, down to half hit points already in the middle oh, lane. We have man. a massive fight, and Cod just gets obliterated as well as Silver Mouse and Doddle. It's, yeah, this is, this is game. Easy Visualize has no way of defending against this, and they still have 30 second death time, as I think, well, Keart, we can definitely say that it is going to be MCOM who will be taking down game number three of tonight, and, um, well, in a very dominating way. Yeah, I mean, that was just a last ditch effort out of uh, Easy Visualize there. Uh, they knew they can't wait it out. Superman is knocking on their door. They need to make a move or they lose either way. So at least they go out fighting. Uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough today. So they need to recover, uh, think about their strategies and make sure they are ready for their next match. But this one going to Amcon and as you said, in convincing fashions.